12 greatest 80s action TV series that are still fresh. When we embrace ourselves with the nostalgia of some amazing action TV series of the bygone era, the 80s immediately come to mind. This era was making incredible progress when it came to the quality work being done for television. The highlights of this amazing content were the action TV series that is still fresh in our minds. In this video, we assembled the best of the lot to give you a throwback of this golden age in television history. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. T.J. Hooker Reputed Sergeant T.J. Hooker was a former detective but demoted himself to street patrol as he felt his services were much needed there. When he's assigned duty at the academy precinct, he trains some of the talented rookies to form a formidable team. This TV series follows the exploits of TJ Hooker and fellow police officers like Vince Romano as they track down the criminals and enforce the law. Captain Kirk from Star Trek is back, and this time he's a skillful cop. William Shatner is clearly the star of this popular cop show, and Heather Locklear and Adrian Zemed provide him with some solid support. The storytelling was fun, but also had some positive messages for the viewers, such as the drawbacks of drug use and the use of illegal guns. All the characters had interesting chemistry among themselves that made it fun to watch their interactions. T.J. Hooker was shown as a normal human being with a troubled personal life, but tremendous dedication for his job. The fight scenes are entertaining to watch as he uses a somewhat similar fighting style as Star Trek. The show does get cheesy at times, but it still managed to run for four years with incredible popularity. This is a remarkably good series, and particularly so for the William Shatner fans out there. Freeze, police! Hunter. Rick Hunter is an honest cop with the right intentions, but he isn't hesitant when it comes to bending the rules to get a job done. This behavior is not appreciated by his superiors, and he doesn't find a suitable partner either since he often gets his partners injured unintentionally. He's finally teamed up with Detective Sergeant Dee Dee McCall and the duo battles it out with some of the slimiest criminals of Los Angeles. When a show runs successfully for seven long years, it speaks for itself. Hunter was a wonderful creation with a clever plot and some well-drawn characters that made it one of the most popular cop shows of the 80s. The protagonist, Rick Hunter, was portrayed by the great Fred Dreyer, who effortlessly eased into the character of a shoot-first, ask-questions-later kind of cop. His partner, played by Stephanie Kramer, had a charming presence, and they made for a fun duo to watch. You would constantly be wondering if they were about to date, but the writers kept you on the edge with this. There were some notable guest performances with the likes of Brian Dennehy, Tracy Walter, Christopher McDonald, and many others appearing on the show. The makers handled the cast changes and never allowed it to affect the quality. Action fans would be delighted by the exploding cars and shootouts that are plentiful. It is unfortunate that towards the end, Stephanie Kramer had to quit the show owing to some injuries that she acquired from the relentless stunts. This show gave us plenty of happy memories from the classic era in television history. I'd make a run for it if I were you. Magnum P.I. Thomas Sullivan Magnum IV is an ex-Navy officer who has been employed by a multi-millionaire's estate. Since the wealthy owner is never around, the estate is run by Jonathan Quayle Higgins III, who barely tolerates Thomas as the head of security. Thomas also works as a private detective who solves crimes that often involve murder and other serious business. He is helped by his friends, Theodore and Orville. The series has a humorous overtone as Thomas is out solving some interesting cases. 
Magnum PI is like your favorite combo at a restaurant that has every favorite food item that you could crave for. This TV series has everything from action, humor, cool cars, women in bikinis, and anything that you could expect from a thorough entertainer. The show had a slow start, but once the glitches were fixed, the writers delivered with some memorable stories. The equation between Higgins and Magnum was amusing to watch, as they were always getting on each other's nerves. At the end of every case, Magnum would have to indulge in some good old fighting that was a delight for the action fans. Tom Selleck was just perfect for this role, and his dressing sense and mannerisms were a treat to watch. He won the Golden Globe Awards for his performance, and later went on to star in the popular TV series Friends, where he played the much-loved character of Richard. John Hillerman was terrific in the role of Higgins, and fans mourned his unfortunate demise recently. For eight long years, the show continued to entertain the fans, and it had a budget that would even make modern TV shows happy. This iconic show further populized the tourism of Hawaii, as people wanted to see the locations for their favorite series. Well, it, it really doesn't matter whether I stay in your good side or not. Not in the least. <laughs> in that case... The A-Team in the aftermath of the Vietnam War, a team of commandos is framed for a crime that they did not commit. Led by Hannibal, these four soldiers are on the run from the military police. But they always take their time out to help out the innocent people and act as heroes for hire. The A-Team consists of some interesting personalities who have their unique skill sets, and one of them is even a lunatic. Their missions take them all across the U.S. and the world as they take on some of the most dangerous opponents. The A-Team is the right mix of action and comedy that is still a hit formula in the world of television. It's one of the shows that revived NBC in the 80s and boasted of an innovative idea where the heroes were four Vietnam War vets on the run from the law. The character of Hannibal was an absolute badass who would smoke his cigars and deliver the coolest lines. He also provided for some unforgettable scenes, such as when he would shoot the tires of a car, making it flip numerous times. George Pepper got the much-needed boost to his career when he was offered to play Hannibal in this series. The likes of Drick Benedict and Dwight Schultz were also brilliant in their roles. One of the best things about this show was the colorful characters, and who could forget the bickering of the characters B.A. and Murdoch? Some episodes would give you a belly cramp from laughing too much, while others would keep you on the edge with some kick-ass action sequences. Come down from there. You bet. <laughs> MacGyver MacGyver is a secret agent who works for the Phoenix Foundation as the protector of world peace. He's a quiet man without many acquaintances, but he is incredible on the job. He abides by his principles and never carries a gun during his missions. However, he has an incredible mind, coupled with the knowledge of science, that allows him to make use of simple surrounding objects to solve problems. When the baddies take him lightly, it only means that their sinister plans are about to fall apart. MacGyver was a perfect family show that even the kids could enjoy. There is no extreme violence or cussing, and the goodness of the series relies on the stories. MacGyver was like a role model for the generation, and was shown to be the perfect guy who didn't smoke, or drink, or swear. It was fun to watch as he crafted explosives from something as simple as a light bulb, a paperclip, and some cleaning supplies. Granted that some of the moments, such as when he escapes out of a pit with his newly found son by strapping fire extinguishers to their backs, is a bit unrealistic. But the show never failed to amaze the audience with its entertaining narrative and charming hero. Richard Dean Anderson would always be remembered for this iconic role, and how his character could put together a bomb while using a toothpick, a stick of gum, and some household chemicals. With seven successful seasons in this long-running series, it attained a cult status and is still cherished by the fans. I got an idea. Michael, you can't be thinking of turbo boosting over the long haul. <laughs> Ah! 
Knight Rider. Michael Knight was shot in the face, and after being revived, he fights for justice under the wings of the Knight Foundation's public justice organization. In his crime-fighting mission, he's aided by Kit, a super-powered Pontiac Trans Am that can go 300 miles an hour. It has several other specifications that come in handy while Knight is dealing with the criminal underbelly of the city. Some of the bits of this show have been derived from a cartoon, and that leads to some corny moments. Despite the cheesiness of the plot, Knight Rider was an extremely entertaining show that was unintentionally hilarious. The center of attention was the cool black sports car that could talk, and you could ignore the flaws and logic while Knight was in action. There was an air of futurism in some of the scenes that featured this incredible car. The episodes were a great mix of seriousness and comedy, and David Hasselhoff aced the role of Michael Knight with his bulky build and a keen sense of humor. Those who think the show is all about the supercar are terribly mistaken. Later attempts to revive the show never worked, and it proves that the charming David Hasselhoff was an integral part of it. The show ran for four years and was so much of a crowd-pleaser that three video games were made based on it. If you're up for some light-hearted fun, this can be your go-to TV series from the 80s. Maybe you won't even twitch. Miami Vice this ranks among the most iconic 80s cop shows where Detective Crockett teams up with a New York cop who's looking for his brother's killers. In the course of the investigation, they take to the mean streets of Miami, battling it out with the ruthless thugs and drug lords. They often work undercover, infiltrating the ranks of the criminals to bring down the powerful enterprises that run the drug racket. This seminal TV show deserves every bit of its legendary status. People often criticize it for being more about the music and fashion content than the story. They are terribly mistaken, because Miami Vice is all about some undercover cops, and their flashy clothes and Ferraris are essential since they're posing as drug dealers. The series does create a cool atmosphere, but it is also about some impressive acting performances by Don Johnson, who won the Golden Globe Award for his brilliant acting. Sandra Santiago, Philip Michael Thomas, and Olivia Brown are also perfectly suited in their respective roles. Miami Vice boasts some of the coolest scenes in television history, such as when the team is night speeding through Miami to a thumping soundtrack. Besides numerous standout episodes and scenes, the show appealed to audiences on various levels in the course of its five-year run. The third season saw the show getting a bit darker, and it added to the excitement for the fans. Gone are these shows, and we shall never see their like again. Ain't we off to a good start? The Dukes of Hazard. The story is set in the rural community of Hazard, where cousins Bo and Luke are up on their adventures. They are assisted by their uncle Jesse and cousin Daisy, as they often find themselves taking on the greedy schemes of their corrupt town leader. They try helping out their friends and neighbors and drive around at breakneck speeds in their souped-up Dodge Charger that they nickname General Lee. This series was meant to be an hour of fun and pure escapism, as was evident by the plot. Thus, condemning the Dukes of Hazard as cheesy backfires on the critics as it was supposed to be. It was a popular show for the kids as well, and the content catered to the guidelines of no nudity or extreme violence. There are some interesting characters, and you'll observe more tender moments between Uncle Jesse and his family. The antics of the dim-witted sheriff of the town will leave you in stitches. The cast was well chosen, and John Schneider, Tom Wopat, Denver Pyle, and Sorrel Brook are fun to watch. Catherine Bach is quite the eye candy, but also delivers when it comes to her acting performances. This show thrives on its intentional goofiness, but it can be a welcome change from the hard-hitting contemporary shows that show you the harshness of reality. Moonlighting. A former model is duped of all of her money by her investment advisor, 
and she joins the detective agency City Angels. Along with Detective David, she becomes involved in the work of a private detective, doing everything from solving murders and kidnapping cases to spying on cheating husbands. In the process, the two get used to each other, but they are very different from one another. Will they become lovers in the course of time? This show takes you through their numerous cases and their budding personal relationship. The writing is often the biggest game changer when it comes to TV shows. As for Moonlighting, the non-stop sledgehammer wit will make you laugh your heart out in every episode. The comedy is carefully nurtured under a compact storyline that gets more serious after the first few episodes. The conventional theme of a detective show was taken up and nurtured into a mind-blowing experience where the two protagonists confronted cases and also the budding romantic tension between them. It's believed that Bruce Willis became a megastar courtesy of his performance in Moonlighting. His perfect companion was Sybil Shepherd, and together they had fabulous chemistry that won both of them Golden Globe Awards. While starring in this show, Bruce Willis made Die Hard one of his biggest hits. With a budget of over $1.6 million per episode, it was one of the most expensive shows of the time, and the fans repaid the faith of the producers with whopping popularity that allowed five seasons of this stunner. Despite the fact that during the last year the series' quality dropped a bit, it remains an entertaining detective show with a witty romantic angle. Airwolf. A secret U.S. intelligence agency possesses the most sophisticated helicopter that you can imagine. This helicopter, Airwolf, can outrun jet planes and fly all around the world dealing with baddies. A renegade pilot and his partner steal this advanced battle helicopter as they are concerned that it might be misused by the owners. Further, it also helps the pilot, Stringfellow Hawk, to blackmail the agency into finding his missing brother in Vietnam. In the meantime, they fly some dangerous missions for the agency in this beastly helicopter. You know it is a job well done when a totally fictional story is made to look believable. This was the biggest asset of this fantastic action show. There was the attention to detail, and every scene was well crafted to appeal to the audience. Jan Michael Vincent was the perfect choice for Hawk's role, and it's said that he brought in a lot of himself to the character. This was also the last major leading role for him. The high-tech action sequences were fun to watch, and the majestic chopper was a sight to behold. Some decent special effects added to the viewing experience during the scenes. The plots were enough to get you hooked, as Airwolf took down rogue dictators and wicked scientists. The worst part is that such an amazing show had an abrupt ending follow Jen M. Vincent's alcohol and drug problems. The creator, Donald Belisario, had problems with Universal Studios, and this also caused the downfall. Even then, it remains a show that was ahead of its time, and it paved the way for many others to follow suit. Get out your keys. Easy. You can run keys, but you can't hide. Remington Steele. Despite being a skilled private detective, Laura doesn't seem to inspire much faith in her clients. She changes the name of the agency from Laura Holt Investigations to Remington Steele Investigations, and suddenly there is a business boom. However, soon the clients want to meet this Remington Steele in crisis. As Laura's cover is about to be blown, she meets a thief named Remington Steele, and he too takes a shine to her. Although her associates seem to think that he cannot be trusted, he proves himself to be a skilled member of the agency. Back in the 80s, there was popularity for detective shows involving a male and female partner. Remington Steele was possibly the best of the lot with a clever premise that was further enhanced with some intelligent writing. The writers kept the audience guessing and provided a variety of episodes where some would make you laugh, some would be packed with action, and some were romantic. It had a successful run for five seasons, but the fifth season isn't as good as the previous ones. Pierce Brosnan charmed the fans with his enigmatic presence, and his chemistry with Stephanie Zimbalist was loved by the viewers. It's funny to note that in real life, Stephanie Zimbalist and Pierce Brosnan didn't get along with each other and didn't even exchange pleasantries on set. 
The wild antics of Doris Roberts, who played a pivotal role, were hilarious to watch. She was even nominated for the Primetime Emmy Awards for her amazing performance. Overall, this was more of a romantic comedy than a crime thriller, and the rich content entertained the audiences for five years straight. The Greatest American Hero Ralph is a simple high school teacher who encounters some extraterrestrials during a road trip through a desert. The alien beings gift him with a red flying suit and provide him with some superhuman powers. Transformed into a powerful superhero, Ralph helps FBI agent Bill Maxwell to fight crime. His secret identity is only known to Bill and his girlfriend Pam. He takes down the most ruthless baddies in business, armed with his uncanny powers and the brilliance of Bill. The Greatest American Hero promised a perfect family entertainment as the series takes you through the journey of two unlikely allies dealing with crime. The superhero was amusing and somewhat of a spoof to the prevailing superheroes of the time. There are some hilarious moments, such as when Ralph loses the instruction book that came with the suit and struggles to use the powers. The role was portrayed to perfection by William Catt, and Robert Culp stunned in the role of the FBI officer. Connie Selica, who played Ralph's girlfriend, was a sight for sore eyes. Despite so much going for the show, the problem was in the poor promotion by ABC, where they termed this to be a Saturday morning kitty fair. It could not reach up to its true potential as a majority of the viewers perceive this as an idiotic children's series. However, the heartwarming narrative remains a fond memory for those who appreciated this unique superhero series from the 80s. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no.